For the latest about China's space mission in Beijing, we have Yang Yuguang, professor at the China Aerospace Science and Industry Corporation. And in Washington, D.C., Dr. Amitabha Ghosh, chair of the Science Operations Working Group for the NASA Mars Exploration Rover mission. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. China's second spacewalk completed. Amazing. A lot of people here in China are extremely excited. Professor Yang, tell me about the real mission behind the glamorous walk. Well, you may notice Mr. Liu Boming uh, first go out of the hatch. He said, wow, it's so beautiful. Uh, so that's a feeling of the astronaut. But on the other hand, it shows that he feels very comfortable. You see that, uh, uh, as we have already discussed many times before, the China's first uh, Space walk performed in 2008 uh, in during the Shenzhou Seven mission by Mr. Zhai Zhigang, also by Mr. Liu Boming. But Liu Boming wears uh, uh, all land space suit made by Russia, and Mr. Zhai Zhigang uh, wears the China's Fatian space suit, but only uh, 20 minutes uh, mm -hmm. space walk. So this time the space walk lasted for more than six hours, actually speaking, nearly seven hours. So you see, this shows that the China's portable life support system is already very practical. Right. The portable life support system is very important for the EVA or the extravehicular activity. Dr. Gosh, you see the excitement of uh, Professor Yang, even the speed of his words are you know, already picking up. Uh, you could tell that Absolutely. many in China, especially in his trade, are extremely excited about that. But it's not just about testing the spacesuits, it's also about making sure there's installation of new equipment for the space station and also there's likely to be more welcoming of other astronauts uh, from other parts of the world onto China's uh, space station by the end of 2022. So Dr. Gorsh, from your perspective, how do you see the latest development? Well, I think it's incredible, you know. I think as a space scientist, the more people, um, the more countries the more astronauts that come to the club and to uh, kind of further the cause of space exploration, the better it is. So it's right now amazing that we have two different space stations orbiting around around the Earth um, and um, two different countries. Um, actually, for, for the US, it is the International Space Station is much more than two countries. Uh, several countries uh, enjoying in this journey, the people enjoying in this journey um, I think it's an incredible feeling. Mm. Talking about incredible feeling for all of us, uh, we did notice uh, the manned spaceship uh, uh, Shenzhou 12 actually have got a congratulation letter from the uh, NASA chief, uh, Mr. Nelson. That to many is quite a nice surprise. He sent it about a few weeks ago. Uh, Dr. Gosh, how do you see, even under the current difficult and challenging geopolitical circumstances, the people really in the fields of space are looking at one another's achievements, Dr. Ghosh. I think there is a widespread appreciation from the technical community and the scientific community. Because remember, outside the arc lights and the uh, press briefings, this is something very difficult. And so people who have been involved in this, you know, all these missions is they are the result of five or ten years of very very hard work and um and there is a huge vision behind it mm. you know to explore space to take as elon musk says takes take mankind beyond earth and make them of extraplanetary species uh, when colleagues succeed i, th I think it's the, the there's there's a tremendous positive feeling here mm. and i think it would be reciprocated everywhere i think Mm. because ultimately it's the human journey. Actually, one party's success would also be circumstances in which other parties could enjoy more resources and attention as well, even under the current circumstances. Professor Yang, from your perspective, how do you see this uh, both cooperation to a certain extent, at least cooperative spirit among the scientific and technical communities between the two countries and also this competition to say the least? Well, you see, uh, to concerning about cooperation and competition, I don't think there are any com uh, competition, uh, at, at least for China. 
you see that China has expressed its uh, concept that we uh, uh, develop the space technology according to our own needs. We don't compete with other countries. Uh, so uh, I, uh, on, at least on the China side, they don't have any uh, uh, competition. Uh, for for the co cooperation, you may notice that the China Manned Space Agency has uh, raised uh, the proposals for joint experiments with, together with the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, or WUNUSA. So uh, uh, from 17 countries, we get proposals, and uh, nine mm. uh, experiments have been chosen for the uh, for the, uh, to to be to be selected, and uh, uh, in the future it will be shipped by the Tianzhou cargo ship to the station and and be performed there. So right. you, uh, we can see that this kind of cooperation has already started. Mm. So Dr. Gosh, what Professor Yang is trying to say, we are international too. Right, absolutely. And I think you have to understand the magnitude of these missions, mm. the amount of effort involved. Not everyone can have every expertise. So NASA regularly signs on um, different countries and NASA gets on missions with different countries um, to be it be a Venus mission, be it be a Mars mission. Um, so this is just common practice. I think it helps both um, partners or how many ever partners there are. If they bring some unique skills to the table, right. then um, ultimately both parties win. This is just because the, there is such a different expertise involved in each of the missions. It enriches everybody if they collaborate. Mm. The world remembered when the first spacewalk took place on the moon. Uh, and that becomes such a historic moment. Of course, that was taking place during the Cold War time, but even at that time, the world was appalled and also celebrating, no matter where they are. Now, China's space program is catching up, certainly, to that of the United States, even though there is still distance between the two. Obviously, this is extremely exciting for many Chinese as well, but also there is the fact that others have done it before. So how do you see on the one hand, the excitement, but on the other hand, also the urgency of finding, you know, the unique characteristics or not of the Chinese missions. For many fields, we are just uh, repeating others or behind others. For instance, the uh, space for, uh, uh, the day before last. You see that uh, the U.S., as you have mentioned, the uh, U.S. and the former Soviet Union, uh, their first uh, space for happened in uh, 1965. Uh, so we are just uh, more than 40 years behind them uh, because this is uh, very necessary for uh, the construction and the future uh, research work and the maintenance of the station. So we have to do this uh, no, no matter who have already done this before. But on the other hand, we also have many innovations uh, just uh, uh, leading uh, in the world. For instance, we are the first one to perform the unmanned automatic docking on the lunar orbit by the Chang'e 5 mission. We mm -hmm. are also the first one to have a soft landing on the far side of moon. So these are the first in the world. So in China, you, you may notice that China is still a developed country, so we have only have limited budgets on space programs, but mm -hmm. we have uh, certain breakthroughs in uh, certain areas, in some small areas, uh, faster than other countries. But in other uh, uh, areas, as I've mentioned, we de develop this kind of technology uh, according to our own needs, uh, no matter who have already done that before. Another point is about space power vis-a-vis -vis soft power, uh, or even hard power. As we know, during the Cold War time, there was a space uh, competition. Uh, I'm not exactly. sure whether we are already on the edge of a new Cold War, because it's debatable and it's debated every day around the world. But Dr. Ghosh, uh, tell me more about how you see the issue of uh, um, space power vis-a-vis -vis soft power, hard power. See, I think the Cold War with the Russians in the 60s uh, was more a real space race or an arms race. Somehow, capability in space was taken as um, capability for military might, right? So I think in this age, say, if um, China and U.S. do different things on the moon, say, say uh, one has a rover here and the other has, is doing something different. Um, there is no direct military, even from a perception point of view, say, uh, the U.S. has is measuring uh, with a radar underground water mm -hmm. um, 
on the on Mars using using the uh, using the U.S. rover and the Chinese rover is also doing exactly the same thing. But there is no military, I think, application of this, right? What would you know? I mean, you would know whether there's water below the Earth on b below Mars, below the surface of Mars. Professor Yang agree. Uh, I totally agree with Mr. Uh, Dr. Amir Tafakar. You see that, uh, for instance, uh, if we have a, a probe or have a manned spaceship on the moon, you see that for returning to the Earth, they need at least three days. So how can this be a military purpose? Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that's nonsense to say that. Uh, that's ridiculous to say that it has any uh, military usage. So I think this, uh, even if they have a race or competition, maybe that's only for, uh, for instance, during the uh, space race between U.S. and the former Soviet Union, that's only for the reputation of both countries and not for any pur uh, military purposes on the moon. There are very interesting comments uh, coming from all over the world about China's space program. There have been talk about whether China's space power will be translated at least into soft power. However, others suggest that there are different reasons as to why it would be difficult. For example, they would say it's state-owned enterprises involving. The links between the space program and Chinese military is unclear. They could also say that some of the technologies China used today were already developed by the others in the earlier space explorations, as we mentioned earlier. So, Professor Yang, how do you see these kinds of uh, discussion? And to uh, a, a science person like you in the Chinese space science programs, how do you see the real purpose of this development? Uh, well, you see, uh, some of the comments from the public are correct. You see that the space program or the space technology, the space field, is very important for a space capable nation, for a big country like China. So uh, there is link. They do have a link between the space technology and the, uh, what you mentioned, the uh, soft power of a country. So the uh, developing the space program is very uh, important and very helpful for a country to de uh, develop its own uh, high technology field and also the whole uh, society and the economy. Me. So this is correct. But on the other hand, you see, uh, although uh, from the history, from the view of history, the space technology comes from the start from the World War II, from the V-2 uh, missile or the rocket. But uh, also the space technology has a uh, dual use. But today it has been proved that uh, at least for the manned space program and for the deep space exploration, they do not have any military purposes. And it has been proved that although the U.S. and the former Soviet Union have some military purpose, um, uh, human space flight in the maybe from the 1960s to 1990s, mm -hmm. but it has been proved that uh, very have low, uh, very very low efficiency. So uh, today uh, it has been proved that uh, it's no need to uh, have some military purpose on uh, manned space flights. So you can see that you may uh, he, uh, you may also read from the internet there are some criticize uh, to uh, to the U.S. that they have some military purpose experiment on board the ISS. So uh, this is not correct. Mm. What do you mean by this is not correct? That the uh, fact you that, that they, you know that the International Space Station is for the uh, peaceful usage of the outer space for all mankind, uh -huh. and it should not be concerned with any connected with any any military purpose. Dr. Gosh. So I think uh, I agree with everything that Dr. Yang said. Um, so there is um, everything here is of science value. You know, even the data that is collected by NASA by Perseverance, or curiosity, they immediately released on websites, you know, mm -hmm. on, on the NASA website and other ways. So if it was military of military strategic data, it would never be, would have been put out there. Um, so the only thing which is indirectly associated in this picture with the military is, of course, the launch vehicle capability. Mm -hmm. And that has some dual use implications. But if you look at everything else, a cancer experiment, uh, experiment on calcium loss right. um, on, this, on the space station, um, this is, I think, if the technology gets out there, it will benefit everybody. And I don't think any country will perhaps keep it to themselves. Talking about the space stations, now we have two already in the outer space. One is a Chinese one, but China believes it should be an international one. One is uh, initiated in the United States, but also the U.S. believe it is an international one. So, Professor Yang, let me ask you, it is very likely that it is developing countries and emerging economies that's going to take advantage of China's international space station now. Uh, how do you see the 
future trends of the work taking place on two different space stations, and how is it likely to categorize the future of research that International Space Station will be able to carry out? This, to me, is fascinating. Well, I can show you a very uh, interesting example. Uh, in 2014, uh, during a Congress of the Astronauts called the Congress of the uh, Association of Space Explorers, uh, so uh, more than uh, 200 astronauts from all over the world come into Beijing. And during this Congress, the other astronauts asked Mr. Yang Liwei, the first man of China in space, uh, a question. Will the China Space Station named ISS-2 and Mr. Yang Li <laughs> said that the name is not important. The important thing is to have the international cooperation. Uh. So on the China's on the release, formal release of the China's National Space Administration, that the China Space uh, Space Station is not only a, a national laboratory in space, but also a very very important platform for the international cooperation in space field. So you can see that, uh, as you have mentioned, this has been a very good chance for the uh, for the uh, for those countries, the, the developing countries, to perform their scientific research in space. So so uh, uh, we can go back into history that China and Brazil have very close uh, uh, cooperation in Earth observation uh, satellites. And also, the Pakistan launched its first, uh, its first satellites uh, by China's uh, uh, carrier rocket in uh, 1990. So these are uh, very good in examples uh, of cooperation between the uh, countries from the, uh, the developing countries. And also, I believe that China will continue to do that. As, as we have previously discussed, China has a very close cooperation with UNUSA. So uh, with the help of the United Nations, I think all the uh, developing countries have benefit from mm. this uh, station. Dr. Gosh, how do you see these two international stations, stations are likely to be different from one another, particularly in the future? I think it will be the same. You know, it is hmm. scientists from, I don't know, from Pakistan, um, Dr. Young mentioned, or um, any other country will be just scientists. I mean, they will be doing scientific research. So it is the same standard of proof. It is the same standard of experiments. So there will be no difference. Um, but I want to interject one point, tiny point is we are talking about the space station today, that there are two space stations. What I found really interesting is um, China has also announced plans for a human mission to Mars in, I think, 2032. Yes. And that is the time frame also um, Elon Musk is planning to send humans to Mars. So the next decade will be tremendously interesting for all purposes you know since the apollo program mm -hmm. since man landed on uh, on the moon uh, 50 years back we have been stuck on the moon mm -hmm. so you know if you ask somebody in the 1970s they would they would have said that in by 1980 we would be on mars and we were never never on mars so there is a joke that you know there was all this hoopla about getting to Mars and all we got is Twitter, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but here there are in 10 years, two major countries uh -huh. have uh, actually unveiled very serious plans for a human landing to Mars, uh -huh. which for the first time will take humans from the surface of the moon to the surface of Mars, which is going to be incredible. Well, I guess, I guess we're going to get more than just Twitter, right? Professor Young? Yes, 2032. Uh, you know that uh, Miss Kenway, uh, what Dr. Gosh has mentioned is a uh, uh, is a report by Mr. Wang Xiaojun, who is the uh, chief of the uh, China's Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology. But uh, what uh, Dr. Gosh has mentioned is only a proposal, not the uh, not a plan approved by the central government. Uh, for now, even the human mission to the moon has not approved by the central government of China. Mm -hmm. So you see, we only have proposals. But in recent days, the difference from the Mars mission and the human moon mission is that China has made many uh, concrete preparations for the moon mission. And I believe that sooner or later, China's astronauts can walk on the moon. But on the other hand, concerning the uh, Mars missions, you see that, as I've already mentioned, uh, mentioned many times, China is still a developing country. China ha only has two uh, mass, uh, robotic mass missions, uh, including the Tiananmen mission and the future sample mission, mission, only two. But as we have discussed before, the U.S. have almost uh, one, uh, one mission for every two years. Mm. Uh, so you see, uh, they do not have any uh, uh, competition in the mass exploration mm. area. And for the, um, for the human mission to the mass, it's far, uh, it, it, I believe it's still, uh, we need to wait a long, long time. Thank you so much to both of you, Yang Yuguang and Amitabha Ghosh. Really appreciate it.